afternoon. Let's head out to the vets now for the governor's coronavirus We're update. We're doing these now Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1 o'clock. We'll continue with that next week. This week we've had a lot of news um, with schools. I have some new announcements today, and I expect the same will be true for next week. So I would ask you to continue to tune in. If you'd like to get daily updates, you can... Um, go on the governor's office website and sign up for daily COVID email updates. We have many thousands of people who are doing that and we, we get good feedback that it's a useful source of information. What I've been saying from the beginning is truer now than ever. Keep yourselves informed. The best thing that you can do is to stay up to date. The virus is changing, information is changing, our ability to fight the virus is changing, so keep yourselves informed so you can keep yourself and your family safe. Uh, we will start, as we always do, uh, with the data. P please put that up on the slide. Uh, again, it's another encouraging day of data. Uh, we've had another 84 cases, so continued steady decline in cases, steady decline in hospitalizations. Uh, sadly, another 10 deaths. It's, it's tough every day to report double-digit number of deaths. So even though we are moving in the right direction in every way, I would just ask everybody, please, to keep in mind and remember every day we're losing Rhode Islanders to this virus, which means we have to stay on it. And we have to stay vigilant. Uh, I would say, you know, the, I'm looking, I look at the data every day in great detail. How are we doing with our percent positive? How are we doing with our percent positive in the areas that have been most affected, Central Falls, Pawtucket, North Providence, parts of Providence, it's all trending in the right direction, uh, which is great and reassuring. But just remember, the virus hasn't gone away. The, the, these, our numbers aren't trending in the right direction because we have a cure or a vaccine or the virus is gone. It's t tending in the right direction because we've changed. The virus hasn't changed, we've changed. We're wearing our masks, washing our hands, staying six feet apart, limiting our uh, b being in big groups, staying out of big groups. So we have to keep doing that. Uh, and if we keep doing that really vigilantly, then we're gonna you know, get back to business as usual. School kids are gonna go back to school. We're gonna have a good summer, but it's totally dependent on every single Rhode Islander following the rules. Uh, and I suspect it'll get harder as the weather gets nicer. So I'm going to continue to ask you for your amazing cooperation uh, and rule following, just as you've done the whole way through. Okay, a couple of announcements today. It's Friday, so I'll try to keep it short. Uh, but I do want to take a minute or two to talk about testing because it is such a key piece of the puzzle. So. Uh, a few days ago, earlier this week, I talked about our three-part approach to testing. We call it SOS. The first S is symptomatics. If you feel sick, we want you to call your doctor and get yourself tested right away. And our commitment to you is to get you tested and have you your results within a few days. That's if you feel sick. Uh, the O is for outbreaks. You know, I think there will be outbreaks, and I don't want you to get scared when they happen. They're going to happen um, in a nursing home, maybe in a school, I don't know where, in a camp, in a manufacturing operation, in a grocery store, in a restaurant. We are prepared for it, though. That's the thing. We'll be there within hours. We will test everybody. We'll do contact tracing, and we'll get folks into quarantine and isolation. And then the last S is what we are calling um, surveillance testing, just constant testing of people who don't have symptoms just to get a feel for the prevalence of the virus. Now, a lot of you have said to me, um, you know, why are you doing this? Be because it is true that the test is much more accurate if you have symptoms. But some information is better than no information. And we've learned from our experience in nursing homes that often we will test somebody, they will be positive, and then a few days later they come down with symptoms. 
So being is how in this virus, literally every minute counts. Time matters, speed matters, an hour matters, a day matters. In order to stay ahead of the virus, that's our goal. We never want it to overtake us. We want to stay ahead of it. We have to be doing a lot of continuous testing of people who aren't sick. And yeah, we're going to get some you know, imperfect information, but we're also going to find a lot of people early before they show symptoms, and we're going to have a feel for um, what's going on in the manufacturing industry? What's going on in nursing homes? How prevalent is the disease among barbers and hair cutters and, and uh, grocery store workers? Because that'll allow us to get ahead of it before there's an outbreak. So earlier this week, I announced a new system for testing close contact workers. Um, Folks that work in a hair salon, barbers, nail salons, gym employees, tattoo, massage, tanning parlors, childcare workers. If you're in one of those industries, I'm asking you to please go get yourself tested, even if you don't feel sick. I know there's some confusion about this, so I'll try to clarify it. If you are in one of those industries and you feel perfectly fine, I'm asking you please to go get yourself tested not because we think you're sick, but we want to know if you are, and we want to know what's going on in that population. Uh, we are providing this for free. It won't cost you anything. And you can go to one of the sites at RIC or CCRI staffed by the National Guard. These guys are pros. I was tested just the other day. It did not hurt. They're fantastic. They've done thousands of these. Don't be afraid. Um, and I would encourage you to do it. We have capacity to run 900 of these asymptomatic tests a day. But right now we're only averaging about half of that. We've been doing about 400 a day of asymptomatic people in these close contact um, industries. So, you know, that's not good enough. I'm not satisfied with that. We have to do better. Um, so I'm asking you please, if you are hearing me and you're a barber, you work in a gym, you're one of these close in contact businesses, you work at your childcare worker, if you could please just do it for Rhode Island. This is, this is like a you're doing your part in the public health effort of Rhode Island. If you can just spare like 15, 20, 30 minutes, get yourself a test and it will help us a lot. So to that end, since we're not where we want to be, we want to be at the 900 a day, I'm asking you all to do it, do your part, but I'm also announcing that we're expanding our asymptomatic testing program to include restaurant workers and bus drivers. Um, this is a big one, and by the way, I'm, I also want to say I'm hearing from a lot of Rhode Islanders who are still afraid, still afraid to go out to eat, still afraid to ride the bus, still afraid to get their hair cut, so the more we test waiters, waitresses, hair cutters, and get a feel for the prevalence of the disease, it is my hope that it will also get Rhode Islanders to be more confident that it's okay to go out for dinner, it's okay to go get your nails done, it's safe, it's fine. So if you fall into one of these categories, which now includes restaurant workers and bus drivers, you can go to portal.ri.gov or you could call the Department of Health, 222-8022, and sign up for an appointment to get yourself tested. And remember, please, this is if you feel well. This is not if you're sick. If you're sick, I want you to get tested immediately. Call your doctor, go get tested. But this is if you feel fine, you're a waiter, you just want to know, you want to do your part for Rhode Island, uh, you can tell the folks you wait on, hey, I was just tested, I'm negative. This is something we're asking you to do. And I would love it if I'm here next week and I can say we're doing 900 a day. That's our goal. We're at 400 now, 900 asymptomatic tests every day. That's where we want to be. So I'm asking you for your help. Um, another quick note on testing. Uh, Dr. Nicole Alexander Scott and I have been up here day after day drawing attention to um, the need for having an equity lens on everything we do in meeting the needs of the crisis and with a particular focus on the communities that have been hardest hit 
which are our most densely populated communities. Central Falls, Pawtucket, parts of Providence. Um, I've said it a million times. These communities are, are hard hit. Good news, um, a week ago, the test positive rate in those communities was still above 20%. Now it is below 20% every place. In fact, in certain places, I think in Pawtucket, it's, at, it's even at 10%, which is where you want to be. The gold standard is 10% or below. Um, but we're not where we need to be, not where we need to be. We have to do more testing in Central Falls, more testing in certain areas of Providence, more testing uh, in Woonsocket and in Pawtucket, which means we need to get into the community, and we are committed to doing that. So for today, I want you to know we're committed to doing that. We have plans in place to roll out more testing sites starting next week in these communities. We don't know exactly where today. We're trying to find the best locations that are the most centrally located and convenient and easy for people in the community to walk to or take a bus to or drive to. Um, but I wanted to, I guess, let you know today as we're ending the week, the data is very much trending in the right direction, even in those communities. And by this time next week, we'll have more testing centers in the communities that are hardest hit. And we are committed to it. We are committed to equity and making sure these communities um, are safe and healthy and we know what's going on there with the virus. Okay, two other um, quick announcements. Um, today, we, we've been talking a lot around around the vulnerable population. I've said so many times, if you were poor or homeless or housing insecure or unemployed before the crisis, this pandemic has hit you the hardest and I, I'm sorry, it's been so tough. I know it's, it's really hard, hard to put food on the table, hard to take care of your kids, hard to keep a roof over your head. And so the whole time we've been responding, we are trying to help you meet your most basic needs of food and shelter and medical care. So today I have a special request um, and I think opportunity for Rhode Island's landlords. I have asked everybody to pitch in here. At different points I've been up here asking everyone to do their part. And you've all said yes every time. It's been amazing. Today I'm asking landlords to step up and do your part. Right now, and I do believe, and we've come up with something that will help you and your businesses while you help people who need a place to live. So I've heard from a lot of landlords, it's a tough time to rent a vacant unit right now um, uh, for obvious reasons. Also, we have a lot of people who are just housing insecure uh, or homeless or on the verge of homelessness. So a few weeks ago, I announced that we had a $5 million initiative uh, to provide more affordable housing. Today, I'm proud to announce that as part of that, some, one of the ways we're gonna use that money uh, is that we're gonna be supporting Rhode Islanders who qualify for housing vouchers, but who often have a hard time finding landlords who are willing to rent to them. I would say that's always wrong. I have stood firmly in favor of ending discrimination on the basis of source of income, but now during this crisis, it's especially wrong and especially problematic. So we are launching um, an initiative called the Housing Now Campaign. We're launching this in partnership with the United Way and with the Rhode Island Realtors Association. Thank you to the United Way and thank you to the Rhode Island Realtors Association. You guys have been great partners as we try to figure out a creative solution here. So here's my challenge to the landlords of Rhode Island. I'm challenging you to pledge at least 100 rental units by the 1st of July. 100 rental units by the 1st of July to be rented to folks that have housing vouchers. It's an aggressive goal, I realize that. There's only a few weeks left, but I'm a firm believer that if you aim high and set a goal, people will get there and they will act to achieve the goal. And this really is a matter of life and death. Homelessness in this crisis is a matter of life and death. So um, here's how it's gonna work. We're going to give landlords a $2,000 signing bonus 
for the first unit that they make available to serve a household experiencing homelessness and an additional $500 for every additional unit. Uh, we're also going to offer landlords as m up to $2,000 a unit to support upgrades, move-in upgrades, like minor renovations and repairs. Again, this is part of the initiative I announced weeks ago, and we think this is a very creative way to quickly help families who are struggling with homelessness. Landlords will benefit because I've heard from you and I've heard from the Realtors Association, um, it's a hard time to rent. You have a lot of vacancies, a lot of turnover, and could use a hand in fixing up some of these apartments to get them up to code. So I think this is a win-win, and I'm asking you to pitch in to help the people of Rhode Island. The quickest, easiest way to get information about this is to call 211. So again, thank you to the United Way. You could call the United Way 211 and you could get information. That's the quickest, easiest way to get information. Um, if for whatever reason you can't do that, you could call uh, the Rhode Island Realtors Association. You could always call the Commerce Hotline 521 Help. But the best way to do it is through the United Way 211. So I hope on July 1st I can get up here and say, We've given um, housing to 100 families who otherwise would have been homeless. And in fact, I hope it's more. I hope we do more. Last announcement today um, relates to a transparency portal by hopefully at this point everyone knows that thanks to the extremely hard work of our federal delegation led by Senator Reid, we, Rhode Island, have secured $1.25 billion in uh, COVID emergency relief monies from the federal government, and we're working hard to figure out the best way to use those funds to meet the needs of the crisis. I have pledged from the beginning total transparency about where that money is going, and today I'm making good on that pledge. Um, later this afternoon, I think probably right after this press conference, we're going to be launching a website dedicated to tracking all of our coronavirus spending. It's at transparency.ri.gov backslash COVID-19. Um, every single penny that we uh, spend from our COVID stimulus fund will be accounted for on this website so every, all the money we're spending on vendors, contractors, hospital surge, PPE, testing, contact tracing, uh, et cetera, will be listed and updated on a, we're gonna aim for a monthly basis, that's hard, but the team tells me we can do it, on a monthly basis, refreshing that, so everyone in Rhode Island can go there, and if you're interested, see how uh, we're spending the federal government's money, to meet the needs of the crisis. And I do want to thank Director Smiley and his team. They're buried in work, but I'm, I'm really happy to be able to announce this today. It'll be online today. Um, at this point, only a handful of other states have done this, so we're ahead of the pack on transparency, and that's where I'd like to be, and that's where I'd like to stay. I think everyone deserves to know how your tax dollars are being spent.